Hey beauties, good afternoon to you. Now I want to dedicate this particular video to my wonderful young people. Young. You know, there's a scripture. Well, you know, in I think it would be in the book of Timothy. Um, but if not, it is it was when Paul was speaking with Timothy as a young fellow, you know, a young man in the faith. And he says, listen to me, Timothy. Do not allow anybody to take your youth as mockery do not allow anyone to take your youth despise it and treat you like dung like garbage like crap like you have no value you have no worth or you are rebellious and you don't mean the kingdom well do not do it do not allow anybody to change your personality god has made us with different personalities some people are more flamboyant some are flamboyant extremely some are not some are introverted some are extroverted you know and their personality type is more you know laid back some is not some people are not sorry some people are not irrespective of who you are do not allow anyone to look down on the fact that you're young. The reality is, and I've experienced this, as generations change, we become a little bit more liberal. So we become more accepting of things. You know, things that could not happen back in the day can happen now. Let us say, for example, in some of the churches that we go, some churches you probably couldn't wear makeup, you couldn't wear jewelry, you couldn't wear, you know, pants as women, you know, female pants I'm talking and so on. Because the scriptures were taken out of context and that's another topic that I will address. And they stifle who you are and they look down on you and think that you are ungodly, you're rebellious, you're godless. And <clears throat> what the enemy has done is that he realizes that people have been, their minds have been twisted and tainted and they have not focused on, on the matters of the heart, the matters of the soul. What they have done is look look on the outer the parents so what the enemy has done is that he he will bring people into the fold that look like christians they look like beautiful luscious green grass but it's really bush when you check it out so they may be natural and i don't get me wrong i'm not saying that people who go without jewelry go without makeup or don't dress flamboyant it means that you know they're not sincere what i'm simply saying is that whatever the enemy realizes that you focus on and you have you misappropriate and you have no and you lack the understanding of he will use it as his to his advantage to your disadvantage so he'll just bring a fleet of people who look like christians holy and pious no jewelry no makeup but what they're doing is secretly wreaking havoc in the lives of christians and in the christian fraternity so what Tim what paul was saying to timothy is don't allow anyone to look down on you you be who god says you ought to be ensure that you're a man filled with integrity you have dignity you have a sense of pride in who you are you be you you be godly and you spread the message of christ this is something that your mom your grandmother your auntie and i am telling you and other men and women of the faith i'm going to teach i'm going to be your mentor and paul was a very good mentor and timothy was a very good mentee mentored by the great paul who originally was against God. And you see how God transformed him? Because what Paul was doing is that God transformed him. He had to be that agent of change and be that so-called transformer through God in the lives of others, which would include Timothy, Silas, and many others. So listen to me, young people. Do not allow anybody to look down on you. You have a lot of bitter, old people bitter they're angry that they could not have been themselves when they were younger they couldn't wear the things they wanted to wear they could not go to the places that they wanted to go they couldn't live a lavish life they couldn't be and with the advent of social media and people can look good and take care of themselves they could not do that and they're angry that they did not get that opportunity to do it so they want to come and tear you down and to say that you're godless and that you're no good and that you're rebellious and that you're and they come with all the vitriol all the rancor and everything want to you know or want to want you to become who they do not want to be so they don't want the then the you know certain things that seem mediocre to them but they want you to live that life do not allow that be who god calls you to be be yourself 
allow the Holy Spirit to transform you and to be who you are. His transformation is not their transformation. And that is why the word of God says, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. The plans that God has for you, it's big. And he uses everybody to cater to different people. You have people who are from the inner city. You have people who are from middle class. You have people from upper class. So he has to use different people to cater to all manner of people. Do not allow anybody to look down on you because you are young. You are youthful and you want to express your youthful exuberance. Express it. Just ensure that you are not rebellious against the principles and the teachings of God. That's it. But be yourselves. If you love jewelry you wear, look at me. I love it. I like a different look all the time. Sometimes you will see, I have, have, I tell people you can't pin me down on one style and fashion. I like many looks. I just, I'm very flamboyant. I believe in fashion. I believe in beauty. I believe in expressing oneself. As long as it's not debauchery, as long as it is, as long as it is not rebellious, rebellious against the teachings and the principles of Christ Jesus. Outside of that, I don't care what you want to think about me. If you want to think I'm fake and false, that's your prerogative. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. I know who he has called me to be, you know. So, you know, I listen to me, beautiful and wonderful young people. Just ensure that you are not rebellious against God and his teachings and his principles. Principles, sorry, but be yourselves, love on yourselves. From you put God first, others second and yourself third. Let us put it that way. It's not last in the sense of... Like you're, sorry, like you're belittling yourself below others. Paul says, you know, if we practice a lot of the principles of the Bible, we would be in less, you know, calamities and less trouble. What he's saying is that put others above you. When you do that, where you, the, the others will put you above them. So everybody will be on an equilibrium. So nobody will be above anyone. But we do it the other way around. Now let me look up for myself first and me first. And that's different from self-care. That's completely different from self-care. You know, whether self-care mentally, whether self-care psychologically, whether self-care financially, whether self-care physically or spiritually, that's a, that's, there are two different things. And, it's, and it echoes the sentiments of, the second, of part B of the first commandment when it says, love your neighbor, treat your neighbor the very same way you want to be treated, love your neighbor as yourselves. So God, you esteem somebody above you. Don't worry, God will allow somebody else to esteem. So both of you will be on an equilibrium. So nobody will be above the other. So you don't have to worry about that. You take care of God's people. You take care of God's king. Well, you help in the building of the kingdom of God. God will allow others to take care of you. You don't even have to ask him something. Sometimes you wonder, my God, Lord, I settled this thing that I had an issue on. You remember the Shunammite woman that Elisha went to in First Kings, I think, chapter 4. Right? The rich woman. She and her husband, she didn't have any, they didn't have any children. He was an old man. She probably wasn't that old. You know, the big man, they love young girls from back in the day. Yeah, man. <laughs> Even Abraham, he was 10 years older than his wife. He was 10 years her senior. And she was 10 years his junior. And, you know, um, she took care of him. They took care of him. They provided, basically like they would provide an apartment for him. Made sure he ate and had all of what he needed. And he went to his servant, Gehazi, and said, sure there's nothing I can do for this lady and she said no I have everything basically I'm wealthy and his wife went and he you know found out and said realize she didn't have any child she didn't have any children and he told the man of God he told Elisha and Elisha said she didn't have, she doesn't have any and then he went to her and said listen to me by this time next year next year spring you're gonna be with a child and she said don't lie to me don't do that to me because I know what I've gone through over the years don't do it he said listen to me You've been good to me. You took care of me. God is taking care of He's going to take care of you. And early in that chapter, it spoke about the widow, the widow who they wanted to take her two sons because they were indebted. And God and Elisha said, give me a last, like he would say, give me a last $20,000. It's like he would say something like that. And she thought that this man is selfish. Me just tell him, so me, I'm a pick them up dead and he might ask me that. And he say, you're me, say? And she listened. So she took care of the man of God in a sense. And God took care of her debts. Don't let anybody despise your youth. Don't let anybody look down on you because you are young and youthful and beautiful and, and handsome. Enjoy your youth. You have one life on this earth. Me, I live my 500 years old. Make I look good. Smell good. Tan good. Be good. You stay there. Enjoy your youth. 
all right and be kind guys follow me on tiktok subscribe to my youtube channel please subscribe to it and do share this message thank